everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's so good to see you again. I am on my Christmas break at the moment for work, so I actually have some time to film a video and I'm super excited to be here with you today. I have my festive jumper with my T-Rexes on it, which is always a big hit at work. <laughs> So today I'm going to continue my series that's all about reviewing um, my undergraduate degree in Near Eastern and Classical Archaeology going year by year because obviously to do all four in one spade is going to produce a really really long video for you. Today we're going to be covering my second year. If you would like to see the first year review, all the courses I took and what I was doing in that first year, please click the link below. So my second year commenced in uh, September 2009, carried through to 2010, and this was kind of the first year that I would say I started getting more challenging courses outside of my languages stuff. Because I knew I was going to be going on field school the next year, I actually made some pretty conscious choices in the types of classes I was able to take that year because obviously while you have your required classes, you also have some flexibility in your extracurricular courses that you chose. This is uh, reflected in the first class I'm going to talk about, which was basically Arabic 101. I knew that I was going to be going to Jordan the next summer, so I decided that I was going to take an Arabic class to try and get a little bit of the language under my belt. And luckily for me, Arabic and Hebrew, which I took the year before, are both, um, I think, Aramaic? Or they're very similar languages. The fact that I'd already gone through Hebrew and learned a completely different alphabet in a similar family of languages, the fact that I had that already under my belt made it a little bit easier. So for all of my Arabic viewers that are here today, ahlan wa sahlan, I obviously don't speak a lot of Arabic anymore, but I did find it to be a really useful course when I went to Jordan that summer and then also the two summers afterward. And as I said, because I had that other stuff from Hebrew under my belt, I found it wasn't as difficult as I might have found it otherwise. My other extracurricular course that I took that year was Sociocultural Anthropology. 101 which again very similar to a lot of archaeological stuff more concerned with uh, analyzing people in current day rather than all the way in the past but a lot of parallels between the two to be honest I don't remember much about the course except the fact that it was in a gigantic lecture theater the next two classes that I had for fall semester were Greek art and archaeology and then Hellenist the Hellenistic and Roman Near East which was quite cool because it um, covered a lot of the sites that uh, I was later going to be visiting when I went on field school. So Petra, for example, was included in that class. And then my least favorite class of, I would say, almost my entire degree, which subsequently led me to changing my actual degree uh, so that I would have to not take any more classes in this like kind of discipline or, or involving math was archaeology and the physical sciences. It's not in any way the professor's fault, it's more so me, my style of learning, and also like my strengths when it comes to studying. So basically the reason I really didn't do well in this course is that I have always really struggled with a lot of like math and like physical sciences, so like biology, chemistry, physics, um, etc. I, I, there's just something in my brain that does not compute when it comes to this stuff. I always really struggled with it in high school. I also come from a family where everyone is good at math except for me. So I got told my entire life that, oh, it'll just click for you one day. Uh, 30 years old now, it's never clicked for me. <laughs> so the physical sciences class that we had covered some interesting material. It was talking about like Harris matrices, it was talking about radiocarbon dating, stable isotope analysis, but the professor who taught it, just his style of teaching and me, and then the fact of what he was teaching was a subject that I already kind of struggled with. I just, it did not compute. He memorized all of his lectures. And so basically from the time that he started the class to when he ended the class, he was just talking nonstop. So first of all, very difficult to take notes you were just writing like the whole class and I think he didn't actually allow people to have laptops in class so you had to write all of your notes by hand and so it was really difficult to keep up and it didn't give a lot of time for like questions or for it to ask him to explain stuff more in depth so yeah I, I did not I did not do well in that class I, I just barely 
scratched through um, finishing that class itself. I remember on the exam, and this kind of illustrates really well my struggles with math, in that I never see the simplest route to a solution. I always take the most complicated way. So he had gave us a question to do with radiocarbon dating that was a formula that he had given us in previous classes, and you know I'd worked on it. I, I had done like faux exams and stuff, and he basically took a variable out of the formula and then you had to still you had to basically find the variable put it in the formula and then calculate this radiocarbon date and i think i used about two and a half pages uh to do the math to try and find that variable and i remember very distinctly when i got it back he was basically like or you could have done this and did it in like three things <laughs> So again, I just I just really struggled to do that. My uh, last course for that for the first semester was Old Babylonian Grammar. Now, if you have watched my first year review, which I would highly recommend because I reference a lot of stuff here that I do there, you will know that I did Biblical Hebrew for my uh, first year because my course had a language requirement for two years of your degree. So if you were doing the Near Eastern strain of my course, you had to do Biblical Hebrew, um, and then Babylonian grammar. Usually in the past they had done two years of Hebrew, but the, the year that I was there, my professor, his like um, specialty was Babylonian, so he basically got permission to run this Babylonian course instead of the um, follow-on for Hebrew, which I, to be honest, I was kind of grateful for. And then the students who were studying classical archaeology, they either had to study Greek or Latin, and then our prehistoric uh, students, I think they had to do French? I can't really remember, but basically you had to do a language alongside your degree. So I had done the first year of Hebrew, fine, passed by the skin of my teeth, but I did it. And then second year, we decided to do Old Babylonian. So this class ran in a very similar structure to my Hebrew class where we had a week's worth of lessons. And then on the Monday, we had a quiz on everything we had done previously and so on and so forth. And then like a midterm and a final exam. Um, I don't remember if we had a spoken and a written exam, but I wouldn't say mm, we probably did. So the cool thing about this course was that we got to learn how to write in cuneiform, which is one of the oldest alphabet systems, I guess, uh, on, on the planet. It's basically comprised of like little triangles Ugh. and a stroke at the end. Most of the time, sometimes you could just have a triangle. So the cool thing about this course was that um, he didn't want us to just be like basically writing with a pen and paper. The professor actually went out, got a reed, which ancient scribes would have used, split them so that they were in these little triangles, and then we each had a couple reeds, and we had plasticine that we made into tablets on our desks, and then we were actually pressing the triangle in and doing it and doing it that way rather than always writing everything down on paper, which was quite a cool element. He actually sometimes also had us like sit in our desk cross-legged like an ancient scribe would have, which was kind of like eccentric, but fit that professor and was kind of cool. As a part of our exams, now I specifically brought these back from Canada when I was there this summer. Like I said, we had the plasticine tablets that we could kind of rub out and then reuse for daily class and I think our quizzes, but for our midterms and our exams, we got potter's clay. And then once we handed it in, our professor would take it to a kiln and he fired it. And then as um, per my school's rules, you could get your exams back and so I got them back. So I now have little cuneiform tablets with my exams on them in my house, uh, which is quite cool. I would like to get these framed one day. Um, to be fair, this probably looks quite impressive. I didn't do well in this course. I passed it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is not the um, greatest example of my academic uh, capabilities, but it looks quite cool and it's a fun story to tell for everyone. So I actually have three. So this must have been either two midterms and exam or three of my exams, I'm not quite sure. I don't remember any Babylonians, so I couldn't really tell you. The cool thing about this, so like I said, we were trying to do it as authentically as possible. So, which one of these is the best? Okay, this one. So basically, when you started out with the clay, you have to make yourself some lines so that you can distinguish between. So we'd, basically we'd have a line across the top, and then we do this, and I think it was, it was left to right rather than right to left because Hebrew is right to left. And then uh, the cool thing is, is that in antiquity when scribes were doing this, because they had this big piece of clay, if they ran out of room on a page, it's not like a page where you run out of room and then you go down to the next line and, and then you have to flip the page. They would actually use the entire thing. So some of my exams, you can see, I went over onto the side to complete my, um, 
thing. To, well, to complete my sentence, line, whatever I was having to do. That was quite fun to be able to do that, so I don't really know how well it would have read, but uh, it was quite interesting. So yeah, I have my own little cuneiform tablets um, that I have at home. So like I said, this ran very similar to our Hebrew course, so the very first semester focused on learning the alphabet, grammar. Cuneiform is really complicated because it has not just like a 27 letter alphabet, it has hundreds of different combinations um, of these little tick strokes that you can make into different sounds. And then you, you take those sounds and you put them together in a word. And sometimes they are either, I think they're called either ideograms or pictograms, I can't remember off the top of my head. And basically depending on where that thing is a sentence, it can mean one thing or another thing, which is just adds a whole extra level of complication onto that, which is really fun. But either way, I did okay in that class, but my physical sciences class, I just, oh man. Again, scraped by, skin of my teeth, just barely passed it. And after that, I was like, I never want to have to do anything to do with any of this stuff ever again. But that's a story for another day. My second semester after I came back, uh, a lot of my courses, they're, they're a continuation of a lot of the courses that I started in September. So I took Arabic 102. Again, slightly more advanced. You go from basic sentence structure and alphabets and everything to starting to trying to have conversations and, and ex expanding your grammar and being able to say more than like, hi, my name is Rachel, which if I can remember com correctly is marhaba or ahlam asahan, um, ana ismi Rachel. So there you go, there's your Arabic if you've, uh, if you wanted to learn a little bit of that today. Next up, I had Roman art and archeology. span So clearly I did Greek art and archeology span the, the semester before. Now I was doing Roman art and archeology. span And then I had Byzantine and, and early Islamic archeology, span which was, again, it's, it, it was more interesting for me than something like the Roman course because I had not done a lot of stuff to do with Byzantine and Islamic archeology span or art as well. Previously, um, a lot of the time when you're taking courses either in high school or the first part of my degree, they're focused on, you know, the big four civilizations, which are Greek, Roman, Egyptian, and Mesopotamian. So it was interesting to get a bit of a, a change. And, and then as well with Western culture, we don't learn a lot about Byzantine and Islamic culture and history. And so it was just nice to learn something like a little bit new, but again, was going to be relevant to when I was on field school because we were going to be visiting a lot of Byzantine and Roman sites in Jordan while we were on field school. And then my next course, which was my highest grade of that particular semester was the history of ancient Egypt, which I just like that. That's my thing. I originally wanted to be an Egyptologist, um, obviously because I had a background in that and I'd already studied it pretty extensively. I did pretty well in that course. To be honest though, I don't really remember much specifically about it, but I did well. So that's all that matters. And then my last course for that semester was Old Babylonian Inscriptions. So again, like Hebrew, we did grammar, simple sentence structure, and alphabet first semester. And then second semester, you start actually doing a text. So with my Hebrew class, I did uh, the Old Testament of the Bible. We started from the very first sentence, translating it. And with this one, we did Hammurabi's Law Code. So for anyone that doesn't know what that is, it is the oldest law code in the world by the Babylonian king Hammurabi. Uh, it's very, very famous. So basically we had a copy of the text and then we were just going through it line by line. Similar to with Hebrew, obviously Old Babylonian doesn't translate completely straight into English. You have to transliterate it, which is you literally translate every word and then you translate it, which is where you basically take those words and make them into a sentence that makes sense in English. And the only thing I really remember from that is kind of the start and the end of the vast majority of these law codes, which if I can see, I think I remember. So, I think these two will be, these two uh, cuneiform will be from my, I probably midterm and exam from my um, inscriptions course. But basically almost every single law in Hammurabi's law code, or if not every single law, begins with the phrase shuma awilam, which means when a citizen. So it would be like when a citizen steals a camel or whatever. And then the only ending of the, uh, any of these that I could always remember because my professor would always make such a, I don't know, a production of saying it uh, was a doc, which is he will be executed. Uh, so 
probably the end of a lot more sentences that you would think in this law code. Uh, they were a harsh people. That's how it was. So yeah, Shuma Uwilam, when a citizen, a doc, he will be executed. Only two things I really remember from that class. I did okay in that one, but again, it was quite difficult. So I, I did okay, but I didn't do amazing in it. And I, and I passed, managed to pass the course. So that was my language requirement for my degree finished which was great. And so as you may have noticed in my first semester, I did six courses and my second semester I did five. That was partially because that summer I was going to be doing my field school, which was also a course that I took for credit. I have a, a story time of my very first summer on field school, uh, which you can watch with more detail, talks a little bit more about the things that we were doing there, the course, what was expected of us. Um, I passed that course, thankfully, and then I went on to start my third year. It was also during this year that I became more involved with the archaeology society at my school. So they were a student-run society and they put on events throughout the whole year. I had tried out to be on it the first year as the first year representative and hadn't gotten it. And the second year, I think I went for the executive and I was the webmaster and I didn't do a great job, but uh, but I was on the executive and it was fun. They ran a formal, we did a pottery smash, they did a Halloween party. Um, it was definite, I don't think we actually, I can't remember if we had to pay to be on it, but I think it was like $10 a year, something like, it was very cheap. And then they also gave us, uh, every year they did like a t-shirt contest. So they would do um, a contest for the slogan on the back of the t-shirt and then whoever won it got a free t-shirt and then everyone else could buy either t-shirts or hoodies. Or I think I got one every year. Let me just check if I still have it. Okay, I found it. That took a literal trip up a ladder in our second bedroom. So um, like I said, we did these uh, contests and this was our sweater for the 2009-2010 season. Uh, very nice hoodie. Quite good quality considering it's lasted about 10 years. Uh, so yeah, so the slogan that year was, I came, I saw, I dug. Uh, play on Caesar's uh, famous uh, quote, I came, I saw, I conquered. They were a really good deal. I would love to be able to get more of these or uh, like archeology, span like swag or clothes that isn't just like either my life is in ruins or like I dig dead chicks or whatever. We had some really, really good slogans over the years. Um, this one is not from a year that I was there. It was from like a year or two before, but my friend had like an extra, so he gave it to me. And it was relative dating, not just for rednecks. I've now worn it to the point where I think I'm putting holes in it. This is a great shirt, great t-shirt. Realized a while ago, not exactly appropriate to wear to the gym because anyone who's not an archeologist doesn't get the joke. <laughs> And now a bunch of people probably think that I have a thing for my cousins or something, which I definitely don't. So second year, I got more involved with the Archaeology Society on the executive uh, branch of it, which was really great. And uh, just continued this journey of my undergrad where I really felt like I found my people, I found my place. Yeah, I just I just really enjoyed it and I, I couldn't recommend it enough. So um, I hope that this has given you guys at least a little bit of an idea of the types of courses you might be expected to take and their requirements. Um, I will say that for most of my courses, they would have had like either one or two essays as part of your graded coursework as long as well as like a midterm and a final exam. If you have any questions about the courses I took or anything, please put them in the comments down below. Uh, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, please watch any of the like 30 other videos on my channel and subscribe. I'm hoping to maybe film in a couple more uh, videos for you over the holiday season that I can then space out with uploading um, because one of my goals is to get back onto the horse for regular uploading for my YouTube channel. Thanks for coming along on this journey with me so far. All my social media links are below as well if you're interested in looking at any of that. I hope that you guys all have a festive and joyful holiday season surrounded by lots of friends and family and food and good times. Thank you so much guys for watching. I will see you next year. Bye!